Hey YouTube, what's going on? In this video, we're going to take a look at React hooks. React hooks are a pattern for writing built-in functions into your React applications that add some sort of functionality. We're going to look at the two most common hooks today, useState and useEffect, as well as some examples for how to use both. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, I've got a new Create React app application running here in the browser. If you want to follow along, just make sure you've got a React app up and running and I'm gonna get started here in the app.js component. I'm just gonna delete all this boilerplate code. We really only need a div to work in here. And before we get started, the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is make sure we have the React library imported. So if it's not already at the top, I'm going to go ahead and import React from React. And this is where we can access our hook methods. And so we're going to be looking at a couple of the most basic hooks and the most useful ones, I'd say. So the first one that we're going to look at is going to be use state. And use state is a way to store stateful information for your application. So this is anything that you want to keep track of, particularly things that are displayed to the screen and might change in value as you use the application. So the way we can do this is we are going to make a new variable and this variable is going to be a destructured array and it's going to take two um, two inputs the first one is going to be the variable that we're keeping track of so in this example I'm just gonna make up a my number variable and the second entry in this array is going to be a setter function and so this is going to be um, the convention here is to just put set in front of the name of your variable but these are pretty arbitrary names. Um, you'll, you'll see it mostly like this. And this, um, both of these are going to be camel case. And we will set this equal to react.useState. So this is our use state hook here, this line. And the default variable for our state variable, or the default value for our state variable, is going to be whatever we put in here. And so in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and put some number in, 15. And we can display it to the screen by including our state variable in our markup here in between curly brackets. And now we'll see, um, once this refreshes, we'll see we've got our number appearing on the screen. So we can go ahead and update this value if we want to by creating a button. So let's make a button that increments this value and we can add an on click function to it. And in the curly brackets, we can pass an arrow function in that calls our set function that we created earlier, set my number. And we can go ahead and pass in my number and add one to it. So now we should get a button where every time we click it, this number goes up. And so what's going on here is that every time we click this button, we use the setter function that we made earlier and we um, increment the state value that we chose by one. And so this is um, this is how you're going to be calling your state, uh, your use state function, how you're going to be changing it. There is another syntax that you might see. You might see something like prev number and then an arrow function inside this. It says prev number plus one. This is another syntax that you can use, and this will take whatever the previous value was that's associated with the setter function of my number. So it's gonna take in 15 at first and, and do the exact same thing. So with the refresh, we'll see, oh, once it refreshes, goes back to 15, and we have the same functionality. So not much has changed, just good to know that there's two syntaxes that you can use, but I'm gonna put this back to just my number plus one. And so this is how we can make our use state hook. We can use any values in here, any JavaScript variables. We could use arrays, objects, strings, anything we want. But um, the, uh, the options that you have are making multiple uh, use state hooks like this. Or if you've used something like class components before where we have um, a state object, and even if you're new to hooks or React, this is another um, pattern that you can use to use your to update your state. And so 
instead of having a my number hook, let's go ahead and create another hook above and we'll just call this value state and we'll call the setter function set state. And we can set this equal to react.useState. And instead of passing a number in, let's go ahead and pass an object in. And inside this object, we can have our same my number value. Go ahead and um, set that like this. And then we can comment out our original hook. And we'll see we get a couple of red underlines here. And that's because we've kind of changed the pattern around. So instead of calling my number, we're going to have to call state.myNumber. And here, instead of calling set my number, we now have this uh, set state setter function that we used above. And then again, inside here, we're going to be um, we're going to be passing a new object in. And here we can say um, we want our my number value to be state dot my number plus one. And so now we're simply um, saying our state value is an object with a property on it. And then when we want to increment it, we are going to pass a new object that has a new property for that number. And so we'll see um, our, our incrementing is working again. But what happens when we have multiple properties here? So let's say we have another, um, another property called my string, and it says hello to start. If we were to also display our my string here, go ahead and wait for it to refresh. We'll see we should get a 15 and then a hello here. So we have two, two values on our state object. But when we click our increment button, while our number went up, our hello went away. And the reason for that is because this set state call here is replacing everything in our hook with this new value. So what if we only want to change the my number? What if we want to leave my string the same? How do we do that? And the way we can do that is in our set state call inside of our object here, we can pass a spread operator with dot 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 state as the first um, variable in the object. And what this will do is it will take our previous version of our state here and duplicate it. And then after that, it will replace my number with what we want my number to be. And so if we go ahead and save now, wait for the refresh, we'll see that we can increment this number and not impact this string here. So you're going to want to keep this in mind if this is the pattern you want to use. It's totally all right if you build an application with a bunch of use state hooks, but if you want to keep it all in one spot, just remember to um, to clone your state with this spread operator. That way you don't accidentally delete any other properties on your state object. And so this is the use state. Um, this is the use state hook. We can pass this these values for the state variable or the setter function down to other components as props. And there's there's lots of things you can do with use state. And this is kind of a quick introduction to how that works. Another um, hook that we're going to want to take a look at is the use effect hook. So underneath our use state hook, let's go ahead and create a react dot use effect hook. And this will take in an arrow function as well as an array. So we'll put a comma and then an array here. And this is what's called our options array. And that will determine how often this um, this hook runs. And so hooks are kind of um, the use effect hook rather is just a um, whenever you want a certain side effect to happen, whenever you want a certain function to run, we'll use the use effect hook. And if we leave this options array empty, this function will only run one time. So if we go ahead and we can say console.log loaded just to see what's going on. Now, if we wait for the application to refresh, we'll see this loaded log uh, appeared once on the screen. And so this is useful if you only need to run things one time, right when the application is, is mounting. But what if we want to run something when our state variables change, for example? So 
We can make another use effect hook. You can use as many use effect hooks as you need. And in this use effect hook, instead of having an empty array, we can pass in our state value. So we want this function to run every time our state changes. Maybe we're waiting for this number to increase and every time this number increases, we want to send a call off to the database or something like that. So in this case, we can go ahead and make a console log and say um, state updated. And now if we go ahead and have our application refresh, we'll see both of these use effect hooks ran at the beginning. And the reason for that is while state actually, well, we didn't update state with this increment button, it did start out as undefined and then it became defined when we used this hook. So um, whether or not you put an option and these options, um, we can either put in state values or prop values. So for accepting props from another component, we could also put that in here. We could have say some property that we, um, we haven't defined in this example, but we can comma separate multiple variables here and it will listen for each one of those to change. And so this is, um, this is how we can wait and listen for other variables to change. We'll see if we click this button, we get our state updated log, our state updated message um, popping out. That's because this number was increased. And um, one more thing that we're gonna wanna know about, which is not super necessary, but good to keep in the back of your mind. Let's say you're setting up a, um, an interval or a WebSocket or a GraphQL subscription, some sort of connection or asynchronous effect that um, will just keep running unless we specify otherwise. One way we can um, make sure that we clean that effect up is by um, using a cleanup function. So let's give an example. Say we were gonna make an interval and we'll set this equal to set interval. And we'll give it about 500 seconds, 500 milliseconds. So um, we could say 500 ms passed. Now, if we, um, if we let the browser refresh, we'll see we have a new effect that's going on every 500 milliseconds. We get um, this number, this, this function is running um, nonstop. And let's say uh, we were to leave this application, this interval would keep going unless we cleaned it up. We could get some mem memory leaks here. So one way we can stop this interval is we can return an arrow function. And this arrow function will tell the um, application what to do when we want to clean up this interval or whatever effect we're using. So we could say something like clear interval and pass in the interval here. And so this is just a way to make sure that you avoid memory leaks. If you have a connection that's going, you can, you can return it here to, um, to stop it when the application is unmounted. And so these, these two hooks, use state and use effect are definitely the first two ones you're gonna wanna learn and get good at when you start React development. And there's plenty more hooks that you can learn there's hooks for context, for reducers, for all sorts of other things, memos, refs. You can even make custom hooks yourself, but I would definitely recommend um, getting started with these two, making sure you understand use state and use effect. And so this has been a quick introduction. I hope you got something out of it. And if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like it, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day.